People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And this statement will become more obvious throughout my video because I'm sold, and I'm sold on little more than an idea. You see, this video is about something different, something I think fans of 3D printing will find interesting. It's more of a vlog approach I've not really taken before, because today we have a behind the scenes in a highly successful company who utilizes 3D printing on a daily basis in order to deliver their sculpted models to thousands of customers across the globe. And the printers they use may surprise you, but they also prove a point I've been banging on about for over two years. So hi, I'm Ross, this is Firehammer Videos, and today we're at Titanforge HQ in Stechin, Poland to have a look at what goes into creating models in 2024. I've got to be honest, it was odd how this whole thing even came about. There I am walking around Adepticon trying to rub shoulders with the creators of miniatures and looking for a way we could help to cross promote each other. And I'd like to go on record here, for anyone in the future who accuses me of shilling for any of these guys, I went after them. I want to promote them. Yeah, I'm going to look to bring ads to my channel, but what would you rather see? 30 seconds of the latest and coolest model releases or me talking bull about why SiteGround and NordVPN are awesome? Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, on the last day of Adepticon, the guys from One Page Rules rocked up and said, hey, do you want to come to Poland next week and work with us on a huge upcoming promotion? What would you say? So yeah, of course I said yes, which led me to getting in a bit of family trouble back home because, well, I canceled plans. See what I do for you guys? I'm risking my personal relationships to bring you content. I didn't want to do this. I wanted to stay at home and spend time with my other half. Is that right, sweetie? That's right. So all of this video is with my utmost thanks to One Page Rules, who flew me out there for this collaboration. So I guess this video is sponsored by them in that way, but honestly, I just think it's fun to peek behind the curtain and look at how 3D printing is changing our hobby. And I'll come back to what all of this meeting was about shortly, because in this trip, I've seen what I believe is the future of wargaming. Now, whilst most of the people there were in planning meetings and recording some cool upcoming promos, which I got to be part of as the comic relief, look, you know I'll happily embarrass myself for your entertainment, I went for a walk around the Titanforge studio with Swavek, the art director, to talk me and show me through their process. And as a 3D printer user, you're probably familiar with much of this business model. Of the companies in attendance, which include One Page Rules, Titanforge and Archvillain Games, you sign up to a monthly subscription that costs less than the third of a box of Space Marines, and each month they deliver upon you droves of models, entire forces for pence on the dollar that a box of plastic warriors would cost. For the Warhammerists among you, this is typically far beyond the contents of a starter collecting or combat patrol box for about a tenner. Now typically, these companies are making models that are generally quite D&D focused, or for painters and collectors who just like the aesthetic of the models, or for wargamers who proxy these models into other systems. Well, until now at least, but as I said, I'll come back to that at the end. So what does it take to make all of this for us? Well, in Titanforge's world, they pretty much have the next year or so worth of models mapped out, but at that point this is little more than a list of ideas of factions or design types that they want to tackle. The real work starts about three months before release where they have a theme decided on and have it narrowed down to a list of models that they want to create. And at that point, they have more meetings and decide on a design approach, then start generating concept art. Many of Titanforge's staff work within these offices, though there are a bunch that work remotely. And I don't just mean work from home, the internet has brought collaboration with people from all over the globe. These companies are no longer limited by the skills of people in their local township, they can source talent worldwide, which in itself is an incredible thing we have nowadays when you think about it. Once the concept art has been agreed upon, the work is then divided up between the sculptors to start turning 2D renders into 3D models. And the concept art plays an important role here in order to determine that design elements are consistent across a particular release. But even without this, the whole team has a daily check-in meeting where they share the progress of their work and collaborate on refinement. And once the sculpted models in the lineup of a release are agreed upon, we're about one month out from the actual release. These 3D renders are used to build promotional materials, such as announcements of what's coming, social posts, and even dramatic videos, so that we, the customer, can start to get excited about what we're gonna see next. 
But their job doesn't stop there because whilst all that goes off, the models themselves are then supported and all of this is done in-house by the Titanforge team. The models are supported, test printed, re-supported and retested. And this happens over and over until they are happy that they've got the best supports they can get, carefully balancing what would be a successful print versus the smallest amount of post-processing cleanup needed for the end user. And whilst this is happening, the models are also getting painted and photographed in-house too. It's an absolute ton of work going off on a daily basis. But once it's all done, we get our release, whilst Titanforge continue working on the next batches of models coming in two to three months from now. It's a process that all of these companies should be applauded for, because now I've seen it, the amount of work that goes in to hit that deadline, it's immense. And for Titanforge specifically, it doesn't even end there. Because not only do they produce the STL files we all like to use on our home machines, for the masses out there that prefer not to print in their home, Titanforge also sell physical models. And the vast majority of these are 3D printed. I'll come back to the rest of them shortly. Because you might be more interested in what a company the size of this uses for 3D printing, an entire fleet of Anycubic Mono X 6KS printers, along with a few GK2s. And rather smartly, I quite like this, they've cut the fronts off the Anycubic lids and used magnets to hold them back in place. It makes everything really easily accessible on their racking. But the point is, this is a machine I did quite a favourable review on a few months back, so if the pros are using it, why not you? But the main thing I want to cover is, this kind of proves what I've now said for months if not years. With so many people jumping on the bandwagon to get the next high resolution 14K printer, when it actually comes down to it, you can get more than adequate results from a 34 micron machine. And if this is not the final nail in the coffin as proof of that, I don't know what's gonna be. And so you're probably wondering, does this mean we should never buy new printers? And should I ignore all of Fohammer's upcoming reviews because they're pointless, we've exceeded what we need? No, because like I said in my first ever printer review, we've all but peaked in necessary screen resolutions. The main benefit of newer printers are convenience features which lead to easier calibration and more successful prints. That is what matters when considering a new printer, to me anyway. Well, that and the new ones look sexier than the old ones, so, you know, anything's a fair reason if you want to spend money. But if you're upgrading, I'd say look for printers with more convenience features first. Features like larger printers or printers with heaters in. Now thankfully Titanforge don't need heaters because this printing room is temperature regulated and yes, they have safety equipment like masks on hand to be worn before entering. And where Titanforge take a step further still is that with models produced for their box sets, they often invoke the use of CO casting their miniatures. These are machines that few of us can afford, but I just found them so interesting that I couldn't not cover it. You see, CO cast is similar to how we get plastic form miniatures nowadays, but instead of spending tens of thousands on CNC machined metal molds, these molds can be created in-house by a single technician. Once the master of a model is 3D printed and cleaned up, it's pressed into a thermosetting plasticine-like material and more of this is built up around the model to ensure a sealed fit and that the mould lines are in the best places. And there are different types of this stuff where red is the hardest set material, yellow is softer and blue is the softest. And unlike metal moulds for plastic miniatures, this blue material allows for undercuts in the actual miniature. Once this soft material is built up and pins are inserted to guide the upper mould, then a second layer for the mould is placed on top and this goes into a vulcanizer which compresses, heats and sets the material in order to make a complete master mould. The technician can then cut channels into this mould which allows the material to flow properly. Titanforge now has hundreds of these masters and making new models is now just a case of adding some release agent, in this case it was talc, placing the mold into a CO cast machine and pressing go. Within seconds we have several resin cast models ready to go. These guys can churn out thousands of models in very little time and when comparing this Adepticon Promo Mini against its printed master, I can't see any quality difference. In fact, due to the colour and texture of the CO-cast resin that came out of the machine, the model from the CO-cast machine actually looks sharper on camera. 
it, it's not, but it looks that way because there's that little difference. And these miniatures can now come in a variety of colours too because the system works by just mixing different coloured pellets in order to achieve a specific tone. This is great when releasing factions of models to people who may just want to play a game without having to paint everything. The different factions are already obviously different colours on the tabletop. And the best part of CEOcast material is that it's reusable too. Any failed prints can be ground up and put back through the machine for future casts. But once everything's printed or cast, it's then just a case of packing up the minis ready for dispatch. But there you have it. It's a whole new world in miniatures production and companies like Titan Forge are one of those at the forefront of this revolution in the hobby space. And I have to add, this is such a friendly and welcoming team. And just one glance at the random debris around their staff's desks cements them as people just like us in the hobby space, with inspiration from things like Aliens to Cyberpunk. That alone tells me they're my kind of people. And if there's one thing I know about the Wargamer community, it's that I'm still a part of it because of how inclusive and supportive it is. Anywhere else in the world, we're weird adults who like to play with toys and games. But amongst our own people, we're safe to geek out. We love it. It feeds and fills us up with those endorphin things we love so much. And we want to protect it. It's why we in the majority support like-minded creators. And this is why I feel no guilt in promoting Titan Forge, One Page Rules or Arch Villain Games, because they're not corporations, they're hobbyists like us. And when we went out in the evenings, we played games because we all just love having fun. And it was out at a meal one night when I looked around the room and realized that these people's job, their goal in life is to bring me joy. And I'd say they're doing it pretty well. Now, just to finish, as you may still be wondering what we were all doing there in the first place this weekend, well, this was all to promote Worlds Beyond, an upcoming frontier on my mini factory, who were also in attendance, and a collaboration between One Page Rules, Arch Villain, and Titan Forge. And this is basically where the latter two parties are integrating their most popular forces into the One Page Rules wargame system which, as you may know, is an open rule set where you can play with any OPR factions, but also Space Marines versus Stormtroopers if you wish. Anyone can integrate into this Wargames rule set, and to kick this off with Worlds Beyond, you have three of the largest miniature creators in the world launching this new initiative. Now, with all the war games I've seen come and go in my four decades of life, and with the community now significantly diversifying amongst the myriad of models available from various creators and finding forces that really resonate with them on a stylistic personal level, even if you want to play war games with penguins, this change is happening now. We can all see it. If you're watching my channel, you're probably part of it. And whilst other companies are being quite iPhone-y in their exclusivity, you know, the invest in my platform, buy my models and buy my rule book kind of approach, One Page Rules is more of the Android option. It's open and for the most part, it's free. It's essentially the OGL for war games. So all they really need to do to succeed in this new world is exist. There's much more content on this coming soon, so if Worlds Beyond has piqued your interest, and if you're into wargaming, it should have, because you'll be hearing these names more regularly before long, I'd say keep an eye on this by checking the links below this video. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to One Page Rules for taking me. And if you like this style of more journalistic vlog content, please let me know in the comments. I thought it was cool and I hope my delivery was at least watchable. I will be doing more printer reviews. In fact, I'm working on the Saturn IV and Frozen Revo now as I read this. But between reviews, I'd like to do more like this, and I have some super cool ideas I'd like to show off, including multicolor resin printing. Yeah, exactly what I said. So if you want to see stuff like that, as I said before, let me know down in the comments. Oh, also, yeah, Dave and Gaz from Mini Wargaming were there too. Thanks to all our members. Until next time, I know Kung Fu. Fohammer out. Hammer out.